Our new book, Biodiversity Health Sustainability Nexus in Socio-Ecological Production Landscapes and Seascape, CEPOS, was published this year by Springer Nature, and it is available as open access. This book examining the linkages between biodiversity, health, and sustainable development, focusing on lessons learned from on-the-ground practices, including local and traditional knowledge. This publication is part of a book series called Satoyama Initiative Thematic Review, SITL, which has been published over the past six years as one of the flagship projects of the Satoyama Initiative. The Satoyama Initiative was jointly initiated by United Nations University and the Minister of the Environment in Japan over a decade ago to realize the vision of societies in harmony with nature around the world. The key concept of the initiative is socio-ecological production landscapes and seascapes called CEPOs. CEPOs are areas where production activities like agriculture, forestry, and fisheries not only support the livelihoods and well-being of local communities, but also contribute to biodiversity conservation and the provision of diverse ecosystem services. The International Partnership for the Satyam Initiative, known as IPSI, was launched during the 10th Conference of the Parties to the Convention on Biological Diversity, CBD, in 2010. IPSI is a global platform to promote networking and collaboration for better management of sepals. Having started with 51 founding member organizations, the global partnership has continuously grown. Today, it consists of nearly 300 members, including national and local governments, NGOs, private sector, academia, and indigenous peoples and local communities. They are dedicated organizations working together to foster synergies in support management and realize the vision of the Satoyama Initiative. The IPSI Secretariat is hosted by the United Nations University Institute for the Advanced Study of Sustainability, UNUIAS, which is located in Tokyo. The IPSI Secretariat has been collecting case studies from IPSI members to learn from their first-hand experiences with CEPOS. We now have over 250 case studies from different parts of the world. In an effort to share knowledge from these case studies, IPSI started in 2015 the SITL annual book series. Each volume compiles a set of case studies focusing on certain timely topic related to global biodiversity and sustainability concerns. The volume also synthesizes key messages arising from case studies to share lessons learned and provide policy recommendations for achieving relevant policy goals. The latest volume focuses on biodiversity health sustainability nexus in CEPOS. This topic was chosen considering the global call for integrated solutions for sustainability and the rising health concerns. The 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development calls for integrated solutions for balance the three dimensions, the economic, social, and environmental. Also, under the recent COVID-19 pandemic, One Health has regained global attention to address increasing threats interlinked to humans, animals, and ecosystems. As a key multi-sector approach, Nexus thinking has evolved to emphasize the dynamic interdependencies between ecosystems and human activities. But how to actually practice Nexus approach is still a challenge in many ways. With this book, we wanted to show real-world examples of Nexus. We collected 11 case studies from IPSI partners to learn how sepals managed with nexus approaches can contribute to sustainably managing natural resources and help achieve global goals. We ask also to address the multiple benefits derived from sepals, trade-offs and synergies, methodologies to measure the effectiveness of sepals management to practice nexus approaches, and challenges and opportunities to move towards more sustainable futures. Authors participated in workshops to learn from each other and provide insights to synthesize case study findings. All authors also reviewed two other case studies to provide peer review comments. Now two of our authors will talk about their chapters. Uh, hello, I am Marielena Mendez Lopez, a co-author of chapter five, to take care of the land means taking care of ourselves 
Local Perceptions on Human and Environmental Health in a High Agrobiodiversity Landscape in the Yucatan Peninsula. In this chapter, we shared our experience on evaluating 20 indicators associated with the forest and milpa landscape resilience through a participatory approach to develop a baseline for the 2020-2030 country strategy of the GEF Small Grant Program. Uh, this landscape in the Yucatan Peninsula is where the rainforest and the main traditional agrosystem, the milpa, coexist. Uh, our methodological route consisted of adap adapting the toolkit for the indicators of resilience in socio-ecological production landscapes and seascapes. And we held two workshops in 2019, which were attended by uh, 40 local people, 18 women and 22 men. Uh, in these workshops, we found that people living in this landscape were very concerned about human health. The reflection generated among participants around this indicator uh, recognized problems associated with water contamination by agrochemicals and changes in diet, um, resulting in recurrent diseases such as diabetes, hypertension, and obesity. Uh, the solutions proposed by local people are linked to the sustainable management of ecosystems and education on values towards traditional and agroecological food production. Thank you. Hello, my name is Patrick Maundu. I work for the National Museums of Kenya and together with my colleague uh, Dr. Yasu Morimoto of the Alliance of Biovasi International and SEAT, we contributed a chapter entitled Safeguarding the Baravasti Associated with Local Foodways in Traditionally Managed Socio-Ecological Landscapes. Uh, in this uh, chapter, we talk about specific case studies. One case study is about uh, the development of a protocol that helps communities uh, document their own uh, food resources in their landscapes uh, and the, the, the uniqueness of this protocol is, is that it can be utilized by uh, the youth who use their parents or their relatives or their, their guardians as sources of information or indigenous knowledge. And then, because young people like using cameras and also uh, modern technology, they use that and then that is relayed to a central point, uh, like a school or a resource center, um, and the community keeps that information there. But now the community can be used by development workers as, as a, a platform or a starting point to develop uh, programs that promote uh, local food waste. The other case we have provided is about um, uh, a community in the eastern part of Kenya known as Yanika Women's Group that was interested in documenting the varieties and indigenous knowledge associated with one species, the bottle of God, which is a central item in their culture. And the, the women used the same methodology, food waste documentation, uh, the, uh, the use of the camera and modern technology to document this from their fellow women and also to document this from uh, their uh, parents in their original homes. And from this information they have created what they call the Kitete Museum uh, or the Bottle Guard Museum which is also a say, source of seed for the community around them and also uh, a source of knowledge for schools and young people, younger people. The other case we have provided is about the promotion of traditional vegetables in Kenya. In Kenya, consumption of traditional vegetables was associated with some stigma. Um, it was associated with the poor, the less modern. And through promotion, we have seen uh, three documentation and then promotion. We have seen uh, consumption rise over the years. Um, and this is an incentive for local communities to preserve these wildlands where these vegetables are obtained. Thank you very much. After analyzing all the case study findings, we identified four steps to practice Nexus approaches 
four more consolidated efforts towards sustainability. The first step is to collectively identify Nexus hotspots, which is a vulnerable area in a Nexus where there are significant trade-offs. This can be done through the co-production of knowledge among different stakeholders who learn from each other, bring together resources, and develop their own capacity for sound decision-making and action. The second step is to ensure the multiple dimensions of well-being of local communities, including material, relational, and subjective aspects. It is particularly important to safeguard the economic viability of interventions so that those dependent on the ecosystem for their livelihoods can be motivated and engaged in biodiversity conservation in the long run. The third step is to strengthen community-based institutions which anchor CEPOS management and then mainstream them through phase and adaptive approaches. In this step, government authorities play an important role in enhancing policy coherence while putting in place fair and equitable mechanisms for incentives and benefit sharing. But policy should be informed by all stakeholders, particularly local communities. Finally, global frameworks and indicators can be used for CEPOS management, but should be adapted to reflect community needs and on-the-ground realities. This will help streamline monitoring, evaluating, and reporting results to high-level policy arenas. Overall, whole-of-society approaches can facilitate inclusive dialogues and participatory decision-making to promote sustainable development. In addition to the book, we created a policy brief with policy recommendations and key messages from the book. You can download it from the IPSI website. For more information on the Satyam Initiative and IPSI, go to our website or scan this QR code.